the whole uh, construction um, process is about 16 to 18 months. So we're looking at being production towards the end of 2023. Welcome to the NEI 500 CEO interview program, where the senior management from select listed companies will share their insights with the audience about their company's growth potential. In this episode, we had the opportunity to speak to Wolden Hill, the Managing Director of FYI Resources, an AS listed company with a trading symbol of FYI. FYI Resources is a company developing vertically integrated High Purity Alumina HPA production. A few highlights that readers should know before watching the interview. FYI is championed by expert hydrometallurgical project management team. The company has successfully developed disruptive, cost competitive, ultra high purity, superior quality alternative HPA process. Recent DFS studies demonstrate top tier economic and investment case. The project has attracted tier 1 support like the joint venture MOU with Alcoa. In the past 12 months, the stock has risen more than 10 times as the company continues to hit one milestone after the other. It's now trading between 55 cents to 60 cents range. It recently started to trade on the OTC markets in US. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content. Hi, Roland. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining us uh, today for this interview. Yeah, thanks, uh, Gilbert. Yeah, it's uh, great to be here. Nice to, uh, nice to be with, uh, spend a bit of time with you. Great. Sure. So maybe we can start off by just giving us a, a, a bit of an overview, a background about your company, FYI Resources. Sure, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, so ASX um, listed company, uh, FYI has been around for uh, uh, many years, but um, just recently we've been embarking on uh, a very interesting uh, development of a, a high value, high quality product called HPA. Uh, we've been spending the last four years developing this, which is a, a very interesting product that um, we see some fantastic future for. And um, the, the whole purpose of our development is to lead into a very exciting industry, being the uh, uh, lithium ion batteries and EV market uh, concepts and thematics. And uh, we, we see a great opportunity uh, presenting ourselves there. Great. Maybe you could just uh, give a, a bit more uh, detailed explanation about HPA, um, the high purity alumino, like what kind of mar markets, like applications to it, what are the main production now in the world, which is this a product coming from these days? Yeah, sure. It, uh, it, it is an exciting uh, product. It's it's uh, alumina, uh, a high purity alumina HPA. Um, it's um, it's very difficult to make. The purity grade target grade is four nines, so ninety nine point nine nine percent. So a very difficult uh, product to make, and therefore uh, attracts a high premium pricing. Uh, and we've developed uh, a fantastic, um, very innovative and fully integrated process to make this. The current market for it is actually quite small. It's only around about 30 odd thousand tonnes per annum uh, today, but is uh, forecast for a tremendous growth, about 17, 18% per year. Uh, and we see that our production will meet uh, that rising demand. Um, and the applications go um, into a number of different things. There's sort of two markets, really. There's a traditional market, uh, which would be LED lightings and substrates and, and uh, phosphor glasses. So, so things like TV, uh, screens, um, tablets, um, mobile phones, smartphones, um, your LED lighting, a lot of electronics is a sort of more traditional market. That's growing at about 17% per year. But the bigger market and probably the more opportunity and where, where we see um, some, some fantastic growth is in the electric vehicle application um, in the lithium ion battery. Um, it's used there in uh, the separator between the anode and cathode. It provides excellent quality material for this, uh, particularly as battery demand, the energy density requirement for batteries is getting higher and higher. So the demand on the uh, inputs into those batteries and the purity is, is being required. So that market itself, um, who knows where the EV market's gonna go, but obviously there's a lot of uh, around about the growth aspects of that but 
we, we'll be tailor making along to that, along with the lithium and the graphite and the other associated uh, battery materials. So long, long ago, you also have a uh, DFS uh, uh, study uh, done on your project, and maybe you can tell us a bit more about the economics of this project. Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. Um, yes, we did. We released that actually last week, um, a revised uh, DFS. Uh, we we re released our original DFS uh, about 12 months ago, uh, about March uh, 2020, and uh, updated it. Obviously, in that time, we did a tremendous amount of project uh, development, um, a lot of pilot plant testing. So our whole DFS is based on fact and, and it's uh, the defensible products. So we, we have absolutely assurance in, in our numbers. Uh, our revised uh, DFS that we put out last week came up with some fantastic set of numbers, which we're really proud about. Uh, we came in with an NPV, just over a billion dollars US, um, uh, IRR of 55%. Um, uh, um, and uh, cost and um, that's OPEX and CAPEX numbers putting us in the lowest quartile production. So, so we see that we put together a fairly formidable um, uh, uh, investment case and um, we're pretty excited about it and we're looking forward to, to developing it. I also saw that you uh, have a partner uh, ship with Alcoa. So maybe you could explain a bit how this uh, works and how significant uh, is that uh, to your company? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're pretty impressed um, about our work um, uh, that, that's been advertised. And I, I think along with um, that being highlighted, it, it attracted Alcoa. Uh, they they um, uh, approached us to sign a uh, joint venture agreement. Uh, we're currently under MOU. We inked that in September last year and, and just working through the process of formalising some conditions precedent, some CPs. Uh, which we've well advanced on. We're looking at uh, finalising and formalising that very, very soon. But the whole uh, the whole concept about uh, having Alcoa join us, um, Alcoa are the world's largest and leading uh, alumina producers. We do produce alumina, although it's slightly different. It's a lot higher grade and higher value. But the, th the synergies between Alcoa and FYI are very obvious and, and certainly taking it forward, the joint development makes a lot of sense. So, so we're very keen to have them on board and um, are working very closely with them and, and we see the future being very bright. So indeed, you've done a lot of work already in the project. So how far now are you uh, away from production and what are the, the biggest risks uh, towards production from this stage onwards? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, look, our, our development uh, timeline has been about four years, uh, starting from concept, uh, work, moving that through to, to scoping and pre-feasibility study, and now two DFSs over, over the space of four years. So there's not much um, that we haven't um, discovered about this process. It is, it is a fairly new process. Um, we've innovated a process and de-risked it over those four years. So we're pretty close to starting um, developments. We, we see that we're likely to push a button on that, depending on how the relationship and, and the time requirements around our co go, but we see that being accelerated uh, so to the point that we will we'll commence um, uh, formal uh, final uh, financing uh, this half year, and then potentially move into development um, towards the end of this, this current fine, uh, calendar year. So the whole uh, construction um, process is about 16 to 18 months. So we, we're looking at being production towards the end of 2023. So it's not that far away indeed. No, no, it's not. No, it's a, it's a fairly rapid and fairly condensed uh, development timeline, but, but certainly uh, manageable. Yeah. So Let's put this uh, question to you, probably the most important one of the whole thing. And do you think uh, FYI, your company is undervalued way now? And why is that? Yeah, well, um, uh, you'd be remiss as a managing director to say that your company isn't uh, undervalued. Um, but, but certainly in this instance, yes, we do, we do see that we are uh, particularly undervalued. We are still in a development phase, so we appreciate that there's going to be some discount to, to valuation, but um, through all the development work and the de-risking, um, and our, our development program going forward, we see value being accreted fairly easily. 
uh, our DFS, uh, as I mentioned at the head or the top of this uh, interview, the um, the NPV for that was just over a billion dollars um, uh, at a, a very conservative eight percent uh, discount rate. So we see that there's a lot of value there. Our current market cap is probably sitting around about the 140 million dollars. So we we would see in fairly short time. Uh, that that value would uh, gather and, and meet the NPV uh, to, to some point. So we, we do see some some great value uh, ahead of us. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Roland, for sharing your story with us here today. Indeed, thank you for your time here. I appreciate that, Gilbert. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. So Cheers. thanks. Until next time. Yeah. Thank you. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay alert of our future content.